and chapter number three is uh, the yoga of action. Now, uh, Arjuna is confused because in the previous chapter, um, he was asking about um, the wisdom of um, the yoga of wisdom. How does uh, one know? And um, in uh, this chapter, he's opening up if wisdom is the answer, couldn't we just refrain from action as uh, was taught by some in his day because all action binds and um, just the wisdom alone um, obtained through meditation would be sufficient. And um, uh, the confusion is on the level of mental activity that Arjuna is going through because to, uh, to understand the fuller pictures beyond a mental capacity to evaluate in terms of uh, ordinary thinking processes which are generally linear and uh, these are um, higher level considerations that uh, have um, solutions to questions <laughs> Um, that are paradoxical in nature. So he doesn't understand even the quality that he's asking. Uh, he believes his mind is asking a straightforward question, but um, he's asking a question that his mind doesn't have the capacity to really entirely grasp. So um, uh, Krishna is going to explain in terms of um, action and uh, karma uh, in uh, his description, uh, the kind of action that he is proposing uh, requires first the understanding of uh, what was made clear in chapter 2 of what our higher nature is. Because if I don't have a grasp on what is higher nature, if I don't have a grasp on um, uh, what my potential, my capability is, then proceeding on with um, action or practice uh, is once again a mental process and it doesn't have the true connection. The, the connection was firstly um, remembering myself. Now in the terminology that the Gita is using, Remembering myself isn't ordinary. There's different levels of what they're implying by that. Um, the level in chapter two was my uh, remembering that I am part of something that is um, the totality of the universe beyond my personal being. And uh, so in chapter two, it's laying that piece out. And in chapter 3, it's now time to understand a kind of action that is uh, what I call karma-free action. It's, it's often referred to as right action because um, there's, uh, as was is asked by Arjuna, if all action has consequences, I'm entirely going to be continually bound by action following action and then action having reaction and the consequences of all those actions. And what is being um, said by um, uh, uh, Krishna is that <coughs> um, that's from one level of understanding and um, uh, you know just uh, the beginnings of what is being required is starting to become clear. Um, what is becoming clear is, is that there is a kind of action that is of a higher level and um, uh, the possibility of acting and participating in that higher level uh, we have the potential for and um, that's what again is going to be called karma free action. So um, that um, without concern 
uh, for the for the results, and um, uh, that's not just a not caring. Um, that's a consequence of acting in um, a way that uh, the higher level influence uh, enters into my action. On the ordinary plane of existence, where I consider um, my actions, even if I get that far, because um, most actions are in fact reactions to previous circumstances, but if I had even the opportunity to sit back and consider my actions and weigh and evaluate what I might do under certain circumstances, I have, um, I'm still filled with mental processes that are myself. Uh, far better, I might add, than being totally reactive to situations where I'm not even um, actually making the decision made inside internally through uh, the reactive process, but um, having um, uh, a different quality or different level is possible. And um, so uh, the consideration that's going to come up here is how is it possible to have actions that are free, free actions from um, uh, the external consequences. Now that seems pretty far-fetched, but um, actually the way that that process takes place is, is that um, I am responding to and hearing from um, conscience and from higher levels uh, what action to make, what action to take. Um, the possibility of that is being laid down here. Now there isn't any um, uh, as yet methodology and, and uh, way of achieving that. It's a higher level ability. He's just explaining to um, Arjuna what is going to be coming up. And what he goes on to describe is uh, essential, is crucial now because Again, another major lesson is, is that we're in life. Life is to be led fully, completely. You live life. And you live life and incorporate all of the kinds of energies and all the kinds of um, uh, human existence, um, every part of one's aspect. Uh, is incorporated into uh, this development and um, they are, are the, the battle is to be fought day to day on the battlefield of life and um, it's not to uh, cut out and repress sections of myself in this case um, he goes as far as to say not to um, extinguish all action, there wouldn't, firstly he said, explain, Arjuna, ex I mean, uh, Krishna explains it wouldn't be possible to um, extinguish action anyway, because that would be non-action sitting, um, which consists of action and explains that, but that's just kind of a um, mental piece, but what is um, required is, is, is action that's consistent with the stream of higher consciousness, the stream of energy of the universe, to um, uh, quote from the Christian tradition, it's uh, not my will but thine. So you are functioning in a way that is consistent with a higher level. Now, um, that has a lot of requirements to it. Just by saying it um, isn't uh, sufficient and it wouldn't be um, even part of best intentions uh, because it requires capabilities. It would require firstly that you that I could know what would be the highest level energy functioning and then be responsive to that and be able to act in that way that would be required of me. All kinds of, of prerequisites that it, without 
much development wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be uh, just a matter of doing the right thing. Doing the right thing has quite a bit of requirements behind it. And um, Krishna is trying to make that uh, clear to Arjuna. I uh, just wanted to make a uh, note here about the difference between uh, the described law of karma and the described law of, uh, or the larger scale law of cause and effect. Uh, the karmic laws affect us as individuals. So we have, um, uh, we do certain actions in our day and we have uh, consequences of that. We say things to people, they have reactions to us. Um, these are karmic and um, it works on an individual basis, it can work on a community basis, on a civilization that uh, there are consequences to actions that have taken place over centuries. Uh, these are all karmic concerns. Uh, cause and effect is of a different order. Cause and effect is the shifting of the plates in the crust of the earth and a uh, school building in China collapses and 50 children are crushed. That is um, cause and effect. There is no consequence from the 50 children having done something in their lives or previous lives in any way that would have caused that event. The same with uh, the tsunami tidal wave that uh, killed a million people, million plus. That is a cause and effect. There was a tidal wave that swept through and killed all of these people, not because they were, uh, it was meant or, or because of their karmic uh, histories. Uh, good, bad, and indifferent were all equally destroyed. So that has to be made clear because the action and the, the law that we're talking about here is on the level of the karmic law. And one other note, uh, there's two levels that um, the information that comes is uh, uh, organizing us from a higher level takes place. One is, and they're both represented in the Gita, one is the uh, level of Krishna talking to Arjuna, which is um, the uh, highest level of energy. Uh, touching into our developed, uh, the part of us that would be the highest developed part. And uh, the second level is the level of conscience. Conscience is represented by uh, the uh, voice of the charioteer uh, talking to the blind king. It is um, his voice that is giving the talk that we hear and uh, the words that we hear in the Gita. So it is on that level of conscience that we hear what is being said. Now there's um, uh, verse 8. Um, it's another one of the key verses here. 